This presentation is a part of Audio Adventure Theater. CTD Productions presents to you Winnie the Pooh, based on the books by A. A. Milne, starring Philip Teeson as Winnie the Pooh and Ray Teeson as the narrator. Episode number six: Kanga and Baby Roo. Nobody seemed to know where they came from, but there they were in the forest, Kanga and Baby Roo. How did they come here? In the usual way, if you know what I mean, Pooh. Oh, in the usual way, ah. Then Pooh went to call upon his friend Piglet to see what he thought about it, and at Piglet's house he found Rabbit. So they all talked about it together. What I don't like about it is this. Here are we, you, Pooh, and you, Piglet, and me, and suddenly... And Eeyore. And Eeyore. And then suddenly... And Owl. And Owl. And then all of a sudden... Oh, and Eeyore. I was forgetting him. Here we are, all of us. And then suddenly, we wake up one morning, and what do we find? We find a strange animal among us. An animal of whom we have never even heard before. An animal who carries her family about with her in her pocket. Suppose I carried my family about with me in my pocket. How many pockets should I want? Sixteen. Seventeen, isn't it? And one more for a handkerchief. That's eighteen. Eighteen pockets in one suit. I haven't time. I make it fifteen. What? Fifteen. Fifteen what? Your family. What about them? I thought you had been talking about your family. Did I? Yes, you said. Never mind, Pooh. The question is, what are we to do about Kanga? Oh, I see. The best way would be this. The best way would be to steal Baby Roo and hide him. And then when Kanga says, "Where's Baby Roo?" we say, "Aha!" Aha! 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 Of course, we could say, "Aha!" Even if we hadn't stolen Baby Roo, Pooh, you haven't any brain. I know. We say "aha" so that Kanga knows that we know where Baby Roo is. "Aha" means we'll tell you where Baby Roo is if you promise to go away from the forest and never come back. Now, don't talk while I think. Aha! 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 Aha. 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 I suppose it's just practice. I wonder if Kanga will have to practice too, so as to understand it. There's just one thing. I was talking to Christopher Robin, and he said that a Kanga was generally regarded as one of the fiercer animals. I am not frightened of fierce animals in the ordinary way. But it is well known that if one of the fiercer animals is deprived of its young, it becomes as fierce as two of the fiercer animals. In which case, "aha" is perhaps a foolish thing to say. Piglet, you haven't any pluck. It is hard to be brave when you're only a very small animal. It is because you are a very small animal that you will be useful in the adventure before us. Oh, really? Besides, Piglet. Kangas are only fierce during the winter months. What about me? I suppose I shan't be useful. Never mind, Pooh. Another time, perhaps. Without Pooh, the adventure would be impossible. Oh. Impossible without me. That sort of bear. Now listen, all of you. Here is what I've written down. Plan to capture Baby Roo. One. General remarks. Kanga runs faster than any of us, even me. Two, more general remarks. 
Kinga never takes her eye off Baby Roo, except when he is buttoned up in her pocket. 3. Therefore, if we are to capture Baby Roo, we must get a long start, because Kinga runs faster than any of us, even me. C1. 4. A thought. If Roo had jumped out of Kinga's pocket, and Piglet had jumped in, Kanga wouldn't know the difference, because Piglet is a very small animal. 5. Like Roo. 6. But Kanga would have to be looking the other way first, so as not to see Piglet jumping in. 7. C2. 8. Another thought. But if Pooh is talking to her very excitedly, she might look the other way for a moment. 9. And then I could run away with Roo. 10. Quickly. 11. And Kanga wouldn't discover the difference until afterwards. And afterwards? How do you mean? When Kanga does discover the difference. Then we all say, aha. All three of us? Yes. Oh. Why? What's the trouble, Piglet? Nothing, as long as we all three say it. As long as we all three say it, I don't mind. But I shouldn't care to say, aha, by myself. It wouldn't sound nearly so well. By the way, you are quite sure about what you said about the winter months. The winter months? Yes, only being fierce in the winter months. Oh, yes, yes. That's all right. Well, Pooh, you see what you have to do? No, not yet. What do I do? Well, you just have to talk very hard to Kanga so as she doesn't notice anything. Oh, what about? Anything you like. You mean like telling her a little bit of poetry or something? That's it. Splendid. Now come along. Just one more jump, dear, and then we must go home. Good afternoon, Kanga. Good afternoon, Pooh. Look at me. Jumping. Hello, Roo, my little fellow. We were just going home. Good afternoon, Rabbit. Good afternoon, Piglet. Good afternoon. Hello, Rao. Look at me jumping! <coughs> <coughs> oh, Kanga, I don't know if you are interested in poetry at all. Hardly at all. Oh. Real dear, just one more jump and then we must go home. Okay, Mom. Go on. Talking of poetry, I made up a little piece as I was coming along. It went like this. Er, now let me see. Fancy. Now, Rue, dear. You like this piece of poetry? You'll love it. You must listen very carefully. So as not to miss any of it. Oh, yes? How did it go, Pooh? <clears throat> Lines written by a bear of very little brain. On Monday, when the sun is hot, I wonder to myself a lot. Now is it true or is it not, that what is which and which is what? On Tuesday, when it hails and snows, the feeling on me grows and grows that hardly anybody knows if those are these or these are those. On Wednesday, when the sky is blue and I have nothing else to do, I sometimes wonder if it's true that who is what and what is who. On Thursday, when it starts to freeze and hoar frost twinkles in the trees, how very readily one sees that these are whose, but whose are these? On Friday... Yes, it is, isn't it? Just one more jump, Roo, dear, and then we really must be going. Pooh. Talking of poetry, have you ever noticed that tree right over there? Where? Now, Roo? Right over there, behind you. No. Now jump in, Roo, dear, and we'll go home. You ought to look at that tree right over there. Shall I lift you in, Roo? Thanks, Rabbit. I can see a bird in it from here. Or is it a fish? You ought to see that bird from here. Unless it's a fish. It isn't a fish, it's a bird. So it is. Is it a starling or a blackbird? That's the whole question. Is it a blackbird or a starling? And then at last, Kanga did turn her head to look. And the moment that her head was turned... In you go, Roo! And in jumped Piglet into Kanga's pocket. And off scampered Rabbit with Roo in his paws as fast as he could. Why, where's Rabbit? Are you all right, Roo dear? <laughs> Rabbit had to go away. I think he thought of something he had to go and see about suddenly. 
and Piglet? I think Piglet thought of something at the same time, suddenly. Well, we must be getting home. Goodbye, Pooh. I wish I could jump like that. Some can and some can't. That's how it is. If this is fun, I, I said them a really take to it. Rabbit was playing with Baby Roo in his own house and feeling more fond of him every minute. And Pooh, who had decided to be a Kanga, was staying at the sandy place on the top of the forest practicing jumps. And then Kanga arrived at her house. Of course, as soon as she unbuttoned her pocket, she saw what had happened. Just for a moment, she thought she was frightened. And then she knew she wasn't, for she felt quite sure that Christopher Robin would never let any harm happen to Roo. If they are having a joke with me, I will have a joke with them. Now then, Roo dear, bedtime. Aha! Bath first. Aha! I am not at all sure that it wouldn't be a good idea to have a cold bath this evening. <laughs> would you like that, Roo dear? Kanga! I see the time has come to speak plainly. Funny little Roo. I'm not Roo, I'm Piglet. Yes, dear, yes. And imitating Piglet's voice, too. So clever of him. What will he be doing next? Can't you see? Haven't you got any eyes? Look at me! I am looking, Roo, dear. And you know what I told you yesterday about making faces. If you go on making faces like piglets, you will grow up to look like piglets. And then think how sorry you will be. Now then, into the bath. And don't let me have to speak to you about it again. Ah! Ah, let me out! I'm piglet! Don't open the mouth, dear. Or the soap goes in. But oh! There, what did I tell you? <coughs> you, you did it on purpose! <coughs> That's right, dear. Don't say anything. So Kanga continued scrubbing Piglet firmly with a large lathery flannel for several minutes. And then... There, all done. Out you come. Oh! Now I'll dry you off. <laughs> now there's your medicine and then bed. Well, well, what medicine? To make you grow big and strong, dear. You don't want to grow up small and weak like Piglet, do you? Well then. Come in. Christopher Robin, Christopher Robin, tell Kanga who I am. She keeps saying I'm real. I'm not Roo, am I? You can't be Roo, because I've just seen Roo playing in Rabbit's house. Well, fancy that. Fancy my making a mistake like that. There you are, I told you so, I'm Piglet. Oh, you're not Piglet. I know Piglet well, and he's quite a different color. That's because I just had a bath. I knew it wasn't Piglet. I wonder who it can be. Perhaps it's some relation of Pooh's. What about a nephew or an uncle or something? Yes, that's probably what it is, but we'll have to call it by some name. I shall call it Poodle. Henry Poodle for short. And just when it was decided, Henry Poodle wriggled Yay! out of Kanga's yeah! arms and jumped to the ground. To his great joy, Christopher Robin had left the door open. Never had Henry Poodle Piglet run so fast as he ran then, and he didn't stop running until he had got quite close to his house. But when he was a hundred yards away, he stopped running and rolled the rest of the way home so as to get his own nice, comfortable color again. Ah, uh, that's better. So Kanga and Roo stayed in the forest. And every Tuesday, Roo spent the day with his great friend Rabbit, and every Tuesday, Kanga spent the day with her great friend Pooh, teaching him to jump. And every Tuesday, Piglet spent the day with his great friend, Christopher Robin. So they were all happy again.
in Kanga and Baby Roo by A. A. Milne, dramatized for audio by Caleb Thiessen. You heard Philip Thiessen as Winnie the Pooh, Ray Thiessen as the narrator, Aaron Thiessen as Christopher Robin, Reed Thiessen as Piglet, Chad Cardine as Rabbit, Daniel Goodman as Baby Roo, and Renee Thiessen as Kanga. The audio adventure theater theme was composed by Garrett Vandenberg. The program was produced by Caleb Tyson. Winnie the Pooh by A. A. Milne is brought to you by C. T. D. Productions. Be sure to check out our website at audioadventuretheater.blogspot.com.